Mm-hmm. That's the morning cryptos. Eh. What's up, Dak? <laughs> so, evidently, it's not a crypto bubble anymore. It's now a financial bubble that is popping all over the world. This could be it. Or it could be just another little shake-up. We'll see. Let's look at the news. Let's look at the charts. Let's start the music. Okay, people. It is starting to get interesting. Uh, Bitcoin down. It touched down here on this chart to 6,000. We have a lot of sell volume coming in. As people are really getting spooked now. And uh, when we go to Bitcoin price, let's see what we got here. Falls below 6,000 as banker signals crackdown. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, here's an article. Bitcoin has plunged since Jack Dorsey made it available to Square Cash users. We'll see. Bitcoin price will crash to zero. Nouriel Rubini says. That's CNBC. This is The Guardian. Not sure I want to look at any of that stuff. Um, Bitcoin news, over 550 billion wiped off crypto since record high just under a month ago, CNBC. Bitcoin price will crash to zero. Okay, now this guy, kingpin of global central banks, calls for a cryptocurrency crackdown. Now, I want you to hear about this. I want you to see this article. Okay, this guy. The head of the Bank for International Settlements, Augustin Karstens, Handsome fellow there. Uh, looks like he's been eating the American diet. Uh, the cryptocurrency Bitcoin is a combination of a bubble, a Ponzi scheme, and an environmental disaster, according to Augustin Carstens, the head of the Bank for International Settlements. He called on central banks to clamp down on Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies to stop them piggybacking on mainstream institutions and becoming a threat to financial stability. Just, just see, that's the pot calling the kettle black. These guys have been printing fake money since 1913. <laughs> and now they're, they're, I said this weeks ago, it kind of seems like they're going to blame cryptos for the coming financial meltdown. Anyway, talking at the Goethe University in Germany, on Tuesday, Carson said, to date, many judge that, given cryptocurrency's small size and limited interconnectedness, concerns about them do not rise to a systemic, systemic level. But, if authorities do not act preemptively, cryptocurrencies we could, could become more interconnected with the main financial system and become a threat to financial stability, he added. Do you see it? Do you see it, people? Do you see how they're planting it? And if it's not happening today, this is their plan for the future that cryptos will be the scapegoat, right? A former head of Mexico's central bank, like, yeah, that's interesting what a German guy is doing running Mexico's central bank. Karsten's acknowledged that many of the world's main central banks have closely examined the potential to transform their own operations using blockchain technology or distributed ledger technology, which underpins cryptocurrencies. In practice, central bank experiments show that DLT-based systems are very expensive to run and slower and much less efficient to operate than conventional payment and settlement systems. Yeah. Yeah, we looked at it. Yeah. Yeah, we looked at alternative medicine, but, you know, we'd rather just sell drugs that have multiple side effects that we can then sell other drugs for. Yeah. Where have I heard this before? Hmm. Yeah, organic farming is a threat, to, you know, to Monsanto's chemistry. Yeah, we got to watch that organic farming. That could ruin everything. <laughs> watch out for that solar and wind power. Could really take down the economy. 
Anyway, sorry. <laughs> well, you know what, people? This is my channel. I can say what I want. And uh, I'm saying what I want. And I think these guys are the real problem. Mm-hmm. Let's read The Creature from Jekyll Island. Read about the Bilderbergs. Read up on it, people. Educate yourselves. Anyway, according to the head... Yeah, and here, this is the next thing they pull out. According to the head of the BIS, the current fascination with cryptocurrency seems to have more to do with speculative mania than any use as a form of electronic payment, except for illegal activities. Right? That's what they, they pull that old illegal activities thing out of their fucking bag every goddamn time. <laughs> it's like crazy. And there wouldn't be a speculative mania... If people could actually support their families on the shit that they get paid with dollars or euros or Venezuelan whatevers or Zimbabwe paper money that just gets diluted and diluted and diluted. Sorry. I'm not going to apologize anymore. That's the last apology. He warned that authorities are edging closer and closer to clamping down to contain the risks related to cryptocurrencies, adding it was alarming that some banks have advertised Bitcoin ATMs where you can buy or sell Bitcoins. If the only business case is used for illegal or illicit transactions, central banks cannot allow such tokens to rely on much of the same institutional infrastructure that serves the overall financial system and freeload on the trust that it provides. Oh, God! The trust that it provides. And then here's a kicker. Founded in 1930, the Bank for International Settlements is the oldest global financial institution and is known as the Bank for Central Banks because it is where they hold accounts. It provides gold and foreign exchange transactions for them and holds central bank reserves. Right. A fraction of the reserves. <laughs> the BIS is also a banker and fund manager for other international financial institutions. So, yeah, they got their fingers in a lot of little frickin' pies. And uh, I'm just glad to see that Americans are not the only fat people in the world. However, uh, <laughs> I don't know, people. That I just had to read that. So, okay, so Wall Street, I heard from Stephen Colbert <laughs> this morning that Wall Street had a really big... A really big thing yesterday. Let's go to Wall Street news. Global stock markets tumble after Wall Street battering. Asian markets are following Wall Street's lead. But why? U.S. stocks poised for fresh losses as global stocks plunge. Uh-huh. And just like in 2007 or eight, or whenever it was, Wall Street's biggest bull isn't phased by the massive selling. Oh, no, I'm buying. Everyone should get in and buy. Right now, it's the... It's the, it's the patriotic thing to do. Yeah. So people, we could be fucked, just so you know. I hope you know how to grow food. Because <laughs> this, this could be interesting. This could be the start of something. I, I have a feeling we're going to see some action by the Federal Reserve. There's probably interest rates going to go up or something's going to happen. So... I'm not going to go through all these markets. They're all down. They're all down a lot. They're all down painfully enough for me. Um, you know, and again, the lesson learned is you got to have some kind of side fund after big moves. you got to definitely take profits and get to the sidelines and wait for it to come back, right? But how do you know when to do that? How do you know when the bubble is really popped? And this may, it may go up from here, right? We don't know. No one knows at this moment what's going to happen next. So depending on what you think and your perception, at some point there's going to be a bargain and you're going to go, oh man, that's a really good project. I gotta get some of that. Here's IOTA at a dollar thirty-seven. Not bad. Litecoin. One hundred and twenty-one dollars. Omise Go. Eight dollars and seventy-five cents. Good project. That project is gonna be here. It's not going anywhere. 
Quantum, really good project. You can get it at 18. I thought we had seen the last of those prices, right? And we're back. So we're back a little chagrined. We're back. We learned something. But hopefully you guys didn't go into debt to buy this stuff, right? That's one way the economy could go down is if everybody goes into debt to buy everything, right? Eventually that's not sustainable. Uh, Zcash, a little glimmer of green here. Uh-huh. Let me look at Cardano. I don't want to look. Here's against Bitcoin. Holding nice against Bitcoin, which means it went down. Let's look at it against the U.S. dollar. And that's just against Tether, so whatever. Um, down to 30 cents. Yeah, I'm in at a dollar, people. I made it 75. I think I'm in at 85. Yeah. Not pretty, but you know what? This too shall pass. And, uh... Maybe it's time to focus on your core business <laughs> and go, you know what? This was fun. But right now, it's not so fun, but that's okay because I'm, I'm here to learn. I'm here to learn. And whatever I may not still have in my portfolio, I'm still way ahead. Because remember, I started buying Bitcoin when it was literally a year ago tomorrow. And the price was about a thousand bucks or so. For one Bitcoin, I bought 20 bucks of it. So, I don't think it's going anywhere. I don't think it's exactly what we thought it was going to be. Uh, and uh, this, is, this is where new things cause us to experience and gather uh, new knowledge about the world. So, people hang in there. Stay positive. Do something you love to do. <laughs> uh, no advice other than... You got to really watch your own emotions your, and how you handle this particular kind of stress because this is stressful. And we have a ton of sell volume here. Um, uh, let's look at the RSI and see what's going on with that real quick. And then I will call it a day. And then we'll get back to something Else. So ADA on the one day chart has not even touched the 30. Okay. <laughs> Let's look at Bitcoin on the US dollar chart. We have, we have gone significantly below the 30. So that could indicate that it might be time for it to go the other direction, or at least that it might be oversold. Um, and it might be time to buy. But I don't know, and I don't have anything left to buy it with, uh, other than, you know, I start over again with $20, and I know I can do that. So the bottom line is the things that I've learned in a year, even if I end up at the same place today that I was a year ago, and I'm way ahead, is I experienced a lot, and I learned a lot, and I also know enough now about these markets. So... That as they develop and grow, I think I might be able to support my music and to finance my life with this. However, <laughs> just not today, but this is where you start and you start and go, okay, it happened once, it can happen again. And now that I know what I know, maybe I can do better with it, right? And, but nobody knows everything. No one has a crystal ball. So be gentle on yourself. Take exquisite care of yourself today. And that's it. That's all I got. All right. Thanks, people. I appreciate you very much. Thumbs up, subscribe, share. And uh, if you like music, check out my music. Got a lot of new stuff coming. Been recording a lot in my living room. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace. Grievous over and out. Start the music!